I am going to give you my professional opinion of the diagnosis of Mr. Beast at the end of this video. So hang in there, stay tuned and watch till the end, because if you want to see what a therapist has to say about who Mr. Beast might be, part three of Mr. Beast, I worked for him and he's a sociopath. Very well done video, great interview. And I'm very curious to hear what other people have to say because from a mental health perspective, I think I see this thing in a completely different light. And I think we need to pay attention to one thing. You don't understand the power of manipulation, the power of dealing with trauma and PTSD and coercion until you're actually in it and it happens to you. So without further ado. I think Jimmy is a awkward kid who maybe, yeah, had it a little rough growing up. I can't speak on that, but I do have empathy for it. Because uh, I you know, had it rough growing up, and I think when you're hyper fixated on something, like I, I love stand up, he loves YouTube, everyone you know, fixates on a thing, you know. I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad, and because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior, if you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say. You know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good, but reap reward. And I think Jimmy just did what the industry and maybe what the system that we have set up demanded. This is interesting. He starts with that in this section because he has alluded to a lot of his past. There's trauma in the past, not being treated well in the past, having a rough childhood. And the reason I have so much confidence in Weddle and what he's saying and who he is as a person, which I think is being, I think he's a caring person and I think he wants the best for people. I don't think it's super comfortable for him to say all of this and to put it out there. Number one, it's embarrassing. Number two, it brings on a lot of heat to himself. But number three, the thing that sells it for me, he's not throwing Jimmy under the bus. He's alluding to things and he must know something about his past, I think, because of the way he's talking. Like, in other words, he might have some things in his past too. And I think that might have been a factor in him becoming who he was on YouTube. And, and basically, you know, you sell your soul in a way to be able to create success. And so he kind of just made that allusion to maybe he's had some stuff happen in the past, hasn't been treated really great, hasn't had the best upbringing. So that might have been a contributing factor. And he clearly understands that because he's been through it. And maybe they've had conversations about their past and their childhood. But Weddle here, you know, from a mental health perspective, he, I believe, is just telling a story to be able to shed light on how people are treated and what's not okay. And I do think the reason that he went back in, like he got fired and left and then came back in, they wanted him to do that 30 days in solitary confinement. I think the reason he did what he did was, number one, he felt like he belonged, that they needed him. Number two, he could have the spotlight, which he wouldn't be pushed out of the camera. Number three, which he, he belonged. He felt like he was somebody. Number three, he was going to get paid, which he was trying to get by and just survive and get enough money to make it you know, going paycheck to paycheck, trying to survive. Wasn't like he was independently wealthy that I know of. And lastly, that it was a chance to, almost at redemption, a chance to be able to uh, redo something in a better way. And he think he thought it would go better from the promises that were given. And so I think he fell right into their trap. I think they coerced him because they knew him and they thought this would be perfect and we can have him do this. And you know, he's he's somebody we can count on and we can get to stay in there as long as we can through the power of manipulation. I don't necessarily think like people, Mr. Beast and other people are want to torture somebody. I think what they do is want to get a means to the end. They want success in their program. This will look good for TV, so to speak. And let's get him in there and then let's keep him there as long as we can. And that's the manip manipulative power of coercion and gaslighting and trying to get him to stay as long as he can for their gain instead of for what's best for them. And I'm shocked they don't have mental health people on site in all of these things they do just to make sure these people are in the right mental state because Weddle was not in the right mental state and you can tell that just from what he's talking about. 
And he didn't care who got hurt. And I think Jimmy surrounded himself with really, really not so great people. And those people were the ones making the decisions. Hmm. And I want to say really important. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who... That's really cool. I appreciate what he's saying here too, because he's saying, I think he got mixed up with the wrong people. I think there were certain people who were, who were pulling the levers, who were making decisions that influenced Mr. Beast. And he got caught up in that, swept up in that. And when you get an operation this big, there's a lot of moving parts. And so he's not always in on all the decision-making. He's kind of just a part in the face of everything and going along with what people are telling him. And when you have advisors that are telling you that, and that's what he's saying, I think he had some people that weren't so up and up, they weren't so uh, clean and they weren't so good, well-intended, that he got swept up in that. Then he stops and says, but I wanna say this very clearly, there were a lot of good people at Mr. Beast and he doesn't wanna discount that. It's not throwing the whole thing under the bus. It's saying there was a lot of good people. I'm curious to see what he says about this. There are a lot of good people here, and I don't want them to be thrown and cast in the same light. There are so many good people that work at Mr. Beast who are damn good at their jobs. Like, when Jimmy comes in and asks for something impossible, it's these people's jobs to do it. And they, it sh they shouldn't be able to make it happen, and they do. And so I don't think people wanted to talk about stuff because I didn't want my friends to lose their jobs. I don't care about my fucking job. I will buy in the hole. I don't mm. care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But uh, just, let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. It's interesting how he will now go into his past. I can see him going in and out. It's like this. You know, up and down, up and down, up and down. And he's looping in and you can see almost his eyes, the way they move, that he's drifting back and he's remembering and he's thinking and he's being kind of triggered into the past and going back to his childhood and probably similarities to how he's been treated through some of the Mr. Beast stuff with how he's been treated in life. And when you're younger and you have trauma or you get mistreated at all, you get either abused or neglected or just mistreated that it's very easy to have that happen later in life because when you're younger, you're innocent and you don't have power. Then when you get older, you think I'm a grown up, I'm an adult, I can make my own decisions. A lot of people might think, look, dude, you're getting paid. You know what you're walking into, what's the big deal? But you know what? A lot of times when you're traumatized as an adult, you are not the adult anymore. You get triggered back to being that child again, the way that you're treated, the way that you're manipulated, the way that you're coerced and gaslit. It's the same thing. If somebody goes to war, overseas and they see people killed and they hear bombs going off and then they come out of war and come back home and they hear cars backfire or fourth of july fireworks they many times are triggered through ptsd back into where they were in the middle east and it can be 10 15 20 years later and they are triggered back to when they were 20 years old in the middle east and their thinking and their brainstem is where it starts because that's where you know experiences and core memories start when they get triggered into that, they're not their 30, 40, 50 year old self. They're back in that person they were when they were first experiencing the trauma. So I want people to know clearly when you're traumatized, same in relationships, if you're abused in a relationship, 10 years later, you're in another relationship and somebody gets really mad and yells, but, but they don't hurt you. They just get mad and frustrated, but they're not, they're not abusing you and they're not coming at you. Just the sound of their voice can bring you back to that scared, frightened, you know, fight or flight or freeze mode person that was there 10, 15 years ago. Just like when you're a grown up, you can get triggered back into a childhood state. So I want people to know that because it's very real. And now he's going back into his childhood, reflecting probably on how he's, I don't know if it's the same thing. I'd be curious what he says, reflecting back on his childhood and how it compares to the Mr. B stuff. But uh, just, let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, this was like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team. Everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody loved him. Behind closed doors, he's a real piece of shit. Mm. And so when stuff starts hitting the fan, what? Him? No. 
People say this about a lot of pastors. I hear this story a lot. Pastors that are wonderful to the congregation, everybody loves them. And then I see a child of a pastor, you know, that's grown up and they're like, everybody loved my dad. I couldn't stand him because he was never home. He always cared about other people and not us. But this is a similar example of my dad. Everybody loved him. Kind of that wolf in sheep's clothing in a way. Like everybody on the outside loved him. They got the external piece. They got the outgoing, the loving, the caring, kind of the face. I got what was inside. I got treated accordingly, which was not good. So you see Mr. Beast and it's like on the outside, everybody loves him. And this is a perspective. Everybody loves him. He's great. Couldn't be him. Can't be any issues. He's amazing. I mean, it's been my perspective. I don't even know Mr. Beast. I haven't really watched any Mr. Beast. But looking at this, I could see how everybody would have an image that he's an amazing guy, very charitable, very giving, and wants everybody to be happy and, and give things away in life. But what's he like behind that? Because people are, don't judge a book by its cover, people are not always the way they appear. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know, the day the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team and it's like when that comes out you're not surprised you know you just go well when i saw my dad in the news i said oh you idiots like i was like no i was oh d- dumbass god damn it uh but i wasn't surprised and it was just a consequence that's happened to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time and what happened with his dad i you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not- Wait, I gotta hear this. What did he do? My job. I won't buy him a whole lot of care. But I don't want my friends to lose their jobs. You know? I don't want anyone's reputation to be fucked. You know? But... Reputation. Dad, just, let's just go back to my dad for a second, if I may. My dad was uh, this, you know, like a swim coach, uh, your neighborhood swim team, everybody, everybody loved him. Everybody swim coach. Him. Behind closed doors is a real piece of shit. And so... When stuff starts hitting the fan. What? Him? No. Surely. And then, you know, everyone, you know, thought my mom was the bitch, you know, for not, you know. The day the news broke, you know, that he did what he did to one of the students of the team. And oh. it's like when that comes out, you're not surprised, you know? You just go, well, I want to my dad in the news. I said, oh, you idiot. Like, I was like, no, I was, oh, d- dumbass, god damn it. Uh, but I wasn't surprised. And it was just a consequence that's happened to somebody who was really good at avoiding them for a long time. And I don't know, everybody, everybody loves Jimmy. And behind closed doors, he is. What a story. Just a little dip into the history of Weddle and the trauma that was there. And something happening with his dad and one of the students as a swim coach that came out. I don't even know the details of that. But to be the son that sees the dad for who he is growing up while everybody else sees him as this picture perfect kind of person. And then somebody who has to face consequences when they've always been really good at avoiding them. He's putting that parallel with Mr. Beast. And there are consequences for behavior. And this doesn't have to mean Mr. Beast is a horrible person or anything. It has to mean that your image doesn't protect you forever. Your image doesn't shield you from choices and consequences. And he's saying, regardless, I think of whatever happens to me or in life, period, I just want people to know that Mr. Beast is not on the inside the same as he is on the outside, which nobody's perfect, honestly, nobody. Everybody has their flaws. And a lot of times because of our past, it creates so much of our present in the way that we live. And he's an example, Weddle's saying, part of the reason I'm messed up and have had such a tough time in life is because look at my model growing up with my dad. Everybody thinks he's amazing. I think he's terrible. All of a sudden he kind of gets caught for doing what he did. And that's not amazing for me. It's it's evidence that that was really going on and that he wasn't a great person, but I'm still messed up from it. Who can I trust, I think is what Weddle's saying. It, It taught me that I can't trust and that I also can't overpower somebody whose image is so wonderful 
like my dad's. I can't go out and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, y'all don't know my dad the way I do. Can't do that. Image is too powerful. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't go out and say this about Mr. Beast because the image is too powerful. You'll be swept under the rug and disappeared just like when they got rid of him. So please give credibility to this. When you have been mistreated, victimized, uh, harmed, abused, it's very easy for the powerful or the wealthy to push you aside because they hold the pen, they hold the hammer. They're the ones that can make things happen so that you and your story don't happen. Don't, no, don't matter. great. And that image is cultivated purposefully and intentionally. And it's branding, it's marketing, it's, it's YouTube. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just one final question on sure. a serious note. Uh, obviously, the Ava Chris Tyson drama. And, um, you know, that's a known issue of traditional media. Uh, did you witness or hear about any uh, sexual misconduct at the company? It's crazy. I, I probably hung out with Ava the most out of the main cast uh, just because uh, I was on Beast Hacks. Uh, now Beast Reacts. I don't know if it's still out. Uh, that was a lot of fun because it was just you know being silly and goofy in front of the camera and uh ava was the only person who was willing to film everybody else was too busy or didn't want to and i was just trying to do my job sometimes there'd be like an off-handed joke that's a little gross i mean i'm a stand-up so i'm very desensitized to that yeah. i didn't hear anything that was like whoa that's crazy like when i saw the reason i messaged you instead of talking to reporters sweetly like i have been Interesting. So he messaged him. Dogpack 404. Shout out to Dogpack 404, by the way, for creating this and doing a great job with the interview. And it sounds like Weddle reached out to him to say, let's talk. But also, he seems very fair. It's saying, I don't know who this Ava person is, but I think it's another kind of main person in the Mr. Beast situation. It sounds like he's being very fair. Like, he could throw everybody under the bus. He could be like, yeah, the same thing's going on there. He's just telling his story. Like, I worked hand in hand with Ava. It's it's kind of, we spent time together and, you know, see a joke here or there, but I'm a stand-up comedian, so we're used to that. And didn't really see anything out of line, at least so far. So it's interesting that he's not just throwing everybody under the bus. Did you, instead of talking to reporters sweetly like I have been, was when I saw the Discord stuff, for the, I never, because when I, when I got there, it was like 2019. So I guess if the timelines add up, that would have been like handled for lack of a better term. And then they, and then they started bringing more people on, you know, maybe they thought they had that under the rug, you know, but, all right, we handled that. Now let's bring in some writers, you know? Um, and when I saw it, all that stuff start coming out and the potentiality as of this moment of recording, you know, I know this has been happening fast and stuff has been coming out so fast. Uh, just the potential that Jimmy could have been in those Discord chats, or even the potential that he participated in those Discord chats. After the shit he did to me. Hmm. Oh, I was feeling it. Just remembering. <laughs> if you're going to make fun of my dad. Yeah. That's the thing. As bad as he could feel, as angry as Weddle can feel about his dad and who he was and what he's done, don't talk about my family. And and not even talk about him, but an underhanded, slighted comment that it sounds like Jimmy alluded that you are just like your dad. And that's what the triggering piece is, which Weddle does not deserve. You don't deserve that. You're not your dad. That's not, that's, children pay the price for adult choices. It's not child's fault any of that happens. You make your choices now. He's living with his choices now. But don't compare myself to my dad. And don't you even let that come out of your mouth. If you're going to make fun of my dad. I don't care what happens to me and my career and reputation after this. I had to, I had to say some stuff. So, whatever happens, happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you really send me or hear about any sexual misconduct at the company? 
I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. But it's like water cooler talk. But I've heard things, yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. Hmm. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You know, the tangible proof that he knew but covered it up. You know, how do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. Not sure why that screen got blurred out. I'm wondering what happened there. The registry and everything who worked there. And like you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, you, that, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated. That's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think there should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, I, I can't confirm or deny from what I hear, He's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they mm. knew that. And he's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeting. Oh, victim one to 11 years old. And, you know, I don't know the story. Can't confirm any of this stuff. But if that's the case, and this is a show or a channel that's working with younger people, you just can't have anybody around anybody younger period rehabilitation is one thing uh, child sex offenders very difficult to rehabil rehabilitate very difficult so that's that's a small small per percentage i think i believe i don't know the statistics but I, I just in my time i have not seen super high success rate with that but not to put them around younger people and to work there and to be watching it and you don't know if anything happened, but just, you just have to kind of turn a blind eye, I guess. He did to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And wow, you know that he knew and because mm. position be of power. Videos. He'll be in thumbnails. He's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? So that's the guy he's talking about? I don't know who that is, but if he's a manager, position of power, he's in control, he makes decisions, he might interview people, he might work personally with people, and wearing a mask. Very interesting. Mask, why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you are a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender with a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose or? <laughs> I, I don't know why they let him go because there's, there's rumors back and forth, you know? So I don't know why they let him go, but he did leave at one point. Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the people in the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. It's like, why, 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 do you, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. Oh. That's his nickname? Oh my goodness. Colloquially? Like, you know, yeah, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. You know? hmm. The fuck? The Jimmy Nova? In, in likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line is a, a different former Mr. Beast employee uh, talking about Delaware. Um, also, apparently before this phone conversation got recorded, the person on the other end of the line said that the Mr. Beast team was actually trying to expunge Delaware's record uh, off the registry. And that's mm. what actually like sparked this person to start recording. Yeah, 
and he was like, I need to sit down, and I was like, if you do it for, like, about four or four minutes, like, stay up, and I'll fucking make it sit for, like, eight hours by himself. You know, I'd be like, yeah, sure, whatever. And, uh, it was really tough, you know, to get him and it was like, we didn't get to an A-Pail manager, and then we went through a whole cycle of different VPs and managers, and, you know, people don't really talk to us anymore. <laughs> because we're scared of Jimmy. Hmm. And if you really don't do anything in the affidavits or testimonials from people, yeah, you will go quickly because a lot of those people are going to go back and start Jimmy. Okay, so Reed is Mr. Reese's former manager who was in the last video telling Jimmy, you know, hey, don't promote gambling to children. Uh, so, you know, I think I think Reed's taken uh, two W's this month, you know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know, but, you know, I know that that's, I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with, so I'll just say preemptively, like, you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. It's very hard for me to believe at that level with managers or heads of production on your team that you don't know something about them or some background check hasn't been done or some rumor has not spread, but especially the background check of like, do we check out all the people that are on this staff? Do we do background checks of people, especially now that we're this big? I would think you would and know everything about them. It's like, what? you're not doing background checks. You're not, yeah. everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that Doesn't needs that more up. of an explanation than just saying, I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need an explanation from you or, or you know, your, your lawyers and, and PR people and representatives and spokespersons and, um, on protection. how you could have not the known that there was protection. an offender uh, at a high level in your company. And while you respond to that, why not just respond to the allegations of, of rigging contest videos and selling fake signatures, running illegal lotteries, um, you know, the, the dangerous conditions on the set of Beast Games, you should address those too. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just let us know. Okay, that was my interview with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle. Uh, I, I know he will be coming out with a uh, longer cut of this interview as well as other content. Um, so I just wanted to shout him out. Jake Weddle, top link in the description. Hmm, gosh. So sad that he, you know, dumps all this out. Look at the look at the reaction as he's closing up. It's almost like a exhale. I've waited a long time to talk about a lot of this publicly, so thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, wow. Shout out to Jake Weddle, honestly, for being brave enough to share his story without any just harsh, mean, vengeful talk, just honesty with who he is. He seems like a very genuine person to me, a very damaged person at this point because of this experience. And honestly, it looks like a guy who's been, who's got PTSD for sure from this, which is triggered back from childhood, but recurred through this experience. So it's a complex trauma situation. A lot of anxiety, depression there, and you know it's damaged a whole bunch of trust in his life. And he's got a lot of work to do with this. Like I said, I think he really needs to focus on face-to-face -face therapy with somebody. And if not face-to-face, -face, then somebody who knows trauma and somebody who knows EMDR, who could work with him through re repairing some of these ruptures and these things that have happened in his life with core memories that have turned into core beliefs about himself and his life, because I think that could help a lot. Uh, shout out to Dogpack404, obviously, for creating this video and being somebody who stepped up to do the unthinkable and also to, uh, to face the beast, to use the phrase in Mr. Beast. And then lastly, my diagnosis of Mr. Beast, which obviously, as a professional, as a therapist, 
I can't tell you he is something because I've never met him and I'm not going to be somebody who's going to say <clears throat> this is for sure who he is. I would love to talk to Mr. Beast someday just to see who he is. Based on the story I'm hearing here and the little bit that I've seen from him in the past, he seems, I don't know his history of trauma like Weddle was talking about there, but he does seem like somebody who's got some spectrum-like tendencies, which basically means, you know, when you look at the autism spectrum, which bazillions of people are on it these days because it seems to get longer and longer. We used to only think of somebody as being autistic or not. Now with Asperger's and other kinds of sensory issues and every, just a lot of people, that it comes down to the reason I say spectrum, <clears throat> there is there's some filtering mechanisms and the filtering is how we receive information and how we send information. And sometimes when you're on the spectrum, the way we receive information is we don't um, attach emotionally as much to it. And so it doesn't, it's kind of like, what's a big deal? Just trying to be straight with you or just be honest with you. Or they can real, feel really offended, like super hyper offended, even though somebody wasn't trying to hurt them. And then also the filtering and the sending of messages. They can send message many times, just matter of fact, very blatantly, very straightforwardly, without it being, they don't, they don't show a bunch of extreme emotion, high or low kind of stay in the middle ground with that, a little numb to that in a way. So he seems like he's got tendencies sensory wise to that. Total guess by me. I do think he's fallen victim to people around him and the power and the fame and the success of what he's done. I think somehow, I guess in a way to say he's lost a grip on what he had when he started. I don't think the way he started all of this this would be what he's intended, but I think it gets bigger than you can handle sometimes. And he doesn't know how to handle all situations and really keep a tight leash on the team that's around him and the support system that's around him. And also to look out for people that's around him. So there's a little bit of narcissistic stuff that would go there. That's not saying he's a narcissist. That's saying there are narcissistic tendencies that, you know, he would maybe need things to go for a certain way for his benefit. And so that he can look better, look nice, look kind, be the front person. In other words, have everybody else do the dirty work or do the work that makes the production happen, maybe tells them the bad news or tries to keep them in the challenge like they did with Weddle in that room. And then he comes in as a nice guy who's pretending to support and encourage. But really, if he's a friend of yours and you know him, you would get him out of that room. That's where I draw the line with him at wondering what's going on with Mr. Beast, that he would just allow people he knows that are obviously hurting to stay in a situation like that. And I think he's looking out for the sake of his company and of his name and of the prestige that he's got, the influence that he's got. And I think he's used that at times. So I would say there's there's narcissistic tendencies. There's some spectrum stuff there. And also maybe a little bit of detachment from reality. In other words, he's gotten so big that it's hard to know what basic reality is and just surviving, like just have a job, to have a regular life, you know, that he's just a normal person because there's a lot of people pulling at him and there's also a lot of money pulling at him to have to be a certain way because we're depending on this money to be able to keep this whole machine going. And so I'm concerned about that. But again, I've never heard from Mr. Beast, never talked to him and probably never will. <laughs> But if I did, I would honestly like to hear kind of that perspective and it would help me see whether he's being really straightforward, really genuine, or if he's trying to give me the answers that I wanna hear uh, by making everything look rosy and clear. But obviously everything's not rosy and clear and we need, and I would like him to be honest about that. Doesn't mean admit everything, it just means be straightforward with how things are. So I hope you've, uh, enjoyed watching this it's hard this is hard to watch there's more to come with this i think and i would like to talk more about this topic of mental health especially in the workplace because this happens in people's regular workplace doesn't matter where you work it happens in relationships things like this happen and i think we need to shed light on mental health and how people feel treated mis manipulated and also misunderstood at times in life so thanks so much for watching this and please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think about this. And I can't wait to see what's coming next. See you on the next Reaction Therapy.